And the main goal for me was to compare and contrast uh, RC Gun Pro approaches that are suitable for each tool, whether you use Task or Scratch 2. So we'll illustrate a two part. Uh, first case is only uh, one remote control button are being used at a time. For example, up only, down only, left only, or right only. And in the second case, uh, you may have multiple buttons can be used at any one time. So maybe you have go forward and then you also you push R. Okay. All right. So the first cut to task edge is a simple one. You know, wait until the data arrive, pick it up, found out is up button, you forward, and then you have an if else if structure because it's only uh, one possible alternative among many. So good old if else if structure, up down left right that's it, and let's see how does it behave. So let's bring up the task code. There we go. Got the actual task code. Right now you see uh, I'm using BT two ten, so it's pretty far away from my ro uh, my PC itself. Okay, let's see we can download. Connected and downloaded. Okay. Now let's see. We can play. Start. Okay. So up. Pretty much normal, nothing special there. Of course, if I push both keys at the same time, up and right, which is sitting at night, uh, my program didn't. I didn't write my program to do to handle that. So you see, the robot just sit there, couldn't do anything. So let's stop that and it's disconnected. Good. So I'm going to close task. So next we're going to bring up the scratch 2 code. Trying to do this basic RC, basic the same thing here. And uh, so remember the computer is on. Let me connect. Let's see. Okay, I'm connected to it. And I made two uh, scratch 2 version. Both of them use the event driven programming procedures that they have. Uh, I go to detail later, but roughly visually you can see this is one section for the up arrow, this one for the left arrow, this for the right arrow, this is for the down arrow. So let's bring the actual code up. It is so you can see a little bit more detail. For now, let's hit. So essentially whenever the up arrow is push set port 1 500, port 2 to 500 essentially. And then basically it's, it has a weight here. So let's see, let's bring it up so we can record nicely. Yeah, we go. So wait until not the up arrow key press. <laughs> so in English essentially, whenever I push the up arrow key, you turn on the motor one, port 1 and port 2, make the robot go forward. And then as long as I press the key, it, it just stay here, essentially. As soon as I release that, it turn all the mount power off. Similarly, you see, I can do the same thing for left arrow. Same thing for right arrow here. And then, uh, same thing for down arrow, essentially. Okay. So in let me zoom out. So in theory now it should work because in interpreting mode and let me go and check over check to see if my bot is still on. So hang on please. I just went over there and check my bot is still on and my R plus scratch still working. So 
Scratch 2 is being connected now. All I have to do is just push the up arrow key. Here we go. See, it's working. And you can see that if I push up, this area I hi I highlight on. Going back now. And a left. And a right. If you look carefully, it kind of far away. But if you push up the first time, it kind of jerk. And then go straight. You jerk to the left a little bit, go straight, and down oh, a little bit better. Of course, I'm trying to push both of them now. I look like right arrow is in control. I release the right arrow, but they're still stuck there. <laughs> Okay, that was fun. Okay, so uh, I made a different version. This one here, I uh, up and arrow is the uh, the code is more reduced, and I push the turn off power into a different event driven block. So let's have a look. Here we go. So let's look at the code with more detail. So you see right now when up arrow I set the power on just to go on. Left, turn left, right, turn right, down, turn around. Right, right. But I also add a piece of code that only will be triggered when I click on the flag. And it's a, a endless loop. And let's see, you have to reduce a little bit, but there's a big, basic big. In English, it say that if uh, it found out that no up, down uh, arrow key is pushed, and well, none, none of the up, down, left, right arrow key is pushed, and boom, they turn the power off. Okay, so it's easier to explain in English. I'm trying to see through the code. All right. And so the program should be the new SB2 is running now. So this is interesting. So if I had to be careful, if I start up arrow or any of the arrow key first, it's gonna go here. That means the the bot keep on running uh, right away. It won't stop. Okay, I'm gonna push the down button right now. You're gonna see it start going, and it won't stop until I flash this one. Here we go. <laughs> so when that code is going, and then that part of the event is taken care of, let's bring it back here. All right. Here we go. Come back. Come back. Come back to me. You see, because of the the, uh, the delay generating the complication, port one always turn on before port two. So you see, it didn't go straight at the beginning, but for long term, it it's okay. But as a start, it's having problems, especially going forward. is very obvious. Okay, that is enough. So we can stop. Okay, what's this next? What is next is uh, first we we have a scratch two that for multiple buttons, shall we say? Okay, let's have a look. So in this one here, it just have everything inside a big uh, endless loop. When you click the clack, that is, and essentially, let me zoom in. So it have a bunch of parallel if shall we say. So if up arrow, power on going forward, 
if down going backward, right go right, left go left, and have a fifth one if none of the key are pressed and power off. So basically, that's uh, the piece of code. So I'm turn it on to run it. So it's running now. And so you see, if I'm pushing forward key, it go forward, backward, go backward. Let me get it ready. Come back out here again. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's go back here into the screen. So I'm gonna push forward key, and then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hang a right also. So essentially, this one here, you can see that I'm allowed to go. Uh, what a move, but it's combination. So basically, go forward a little bit and go backward a little bit. Go back. Okay. Uh oh, it got stuck somehow. There we go. So I'm go forward and hang a left at the same time. So left forward a bit. So it turned out it can handle uh, multiple. Keystroke. And it does backward too, but it's not very well it's just because of the geometry. Okay. So essentially, this piece of code. Uh, in Scratch 2 will provide you to essentially as a side benefit is handle uh, multiple uh, keyboard. How does it look on the Scratch on the task side to do the same thing? And it turned out to be on the task side to do the same thing it was uh, kind of complicated because first I try out on the I, I thought, oh, all I have to do is just uh, let's bring it scratched back. All I have to do is just push this big endless loop with five if in there back to it, and it should do it, right? So I create this one. That's a task. And let me bring it in. So. 3A, where are you? Let's see. Here we go, coming up. So, this one is a task program. All it does is I thought I could uh, just translate the scratch code from over here into the task code. So, I have a big endless loop, I pick up the button. And I say, okay, if you you know want to push anything, you stop. Basically, I have a bunch of parallel if in there. And uh, let me make sure I reset everything. Okay, remember we've been playing with this one, so I have to disconnect from here and go to task. So I freed up my com port. Yeah, you can see it's blinking now. So hopefully, freed up. So I'm going to download, goods connecting, downloading, okay, so before I play with this one though, I need to go over and uh, retard start it on the bot, so give me a sec, okay, I'm back, so let's see if we can work it out like a task code, start connecting, all right. So now I'm using forward key. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Gonna push up for key forward and put right also. In theory, it should go forward a little bit, right a little bit, forward right a little bit, just like in the uh, uh, scratch two code. Let's see. It did not work. You see here. Let me go back. So in the screen, so you can watch the little guy and see. Okay, I'm going forward now for a little bit. Now I'm adding R. But it's still going straight. It doesn't do any change. <laughs> okay. So I first learned is, hmm. Scratch code is a different uh, 
solution and whatever is going on in here you cannot exactly change to a task code basically do a direct translation from what the way you know from you know from your own programming practice and expect it the same it didn't work so I had to figure took, took me some time but then, then I finally figured out how to make it work was essentially um, first when you take the data in you have to filter with up down left right so the parameter up button down button left button right button essentially it's just like flags okay they will be non-zero mean that that up button was pushed for example so any of these up down left right button if they're non-zero like I show here on statement 16 if non-zero that mean oh you want it to go forward and so I call forward also I found out that I had to put in a time delay of about 250 milliseconds for everything to work properly okay so this is the actual code and uh, I need to go over there and turn the, the bot back on and off again <laughs> Okay, here I'm back again now. Let's see if we could download this new piece of code in there. Okay, download. Connecting. Okay, download it. And it turned itself off, so I'm going to pause again. Give me a few minutes. So make sure everything is on. So let's play now. Let's start. Connect it. So now I'm going forward. I'm going backward is normal. I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to push right also. It's struggling a little bit. It's, but it's it doing forward and right a little bit there. You can see. Let's see. Forward kind of poorly there you see okay let's try it again I'm gonna go forward and then gonna go left at the same time so you can see it did that a different curve okay so very interestingly, I didn't plan it, <laughs> but I found out that uh, each tool task or scratch two require a different problem solving approach, and the code that you obtain from them are not directly translatable to each other at all. So each of them have different capability and feature and uh, problem solving approach have to be different from each of them.